is February 28, 1989. In the quaint village of Nyoki, tucked away in the outskirts of Japan, Yumi Chinaka, a primary school teacher, is ready to settle back into her routine after a relaxing long weekend. Little does she know, her life is about to take a critical and somewhat unexpected turn. As she enters the school's restroom, Yumi spots something peculiar. A lone black shoe lodged in the squat toilet's opening. Curiosity? Getting the better of her, Yumi decides to investigate the sewer tank outside. And that's when things start to take a turn for the worse. She discovers a pair of bare human feet dangling in the pipe. The squat toilet, commonly found in Asia and other parts of the world, is a type of toilet that is designed to be used in a squatting position. It consists of a porcelain bowl set into the ground with a small U-shaped pipe leading into a sewer or septic tank system. To use the toilet, the user must squat over the bowl with their feet placed on either side of the opening. So after using the squat toilet, it would be flushed by pouring uh, water from a bucket into the bowl. The waste travels through a U-shaped pipe and into the sewer tank outside. The access is outside, but the sewer tank goes under the toilet. The squat toilet might seem a little bit strange and uncomfortable, but it's pretty common around the world. Let's talk about Nayuki Kano. He was not your average 26 year old man. He was an employee at a nuclear power plant and he had a really solid reputation in the community. He was known for his helpful nature and his bright personality. On February 24th, four days before his discovery, Nayuki casually mentioned to his father he was going to step out for a short while. Little did anyone know this would be the beginning of Nayuki's great vanishing act. As hours turned into days, his parents grew increasingly concerned. They took matters into their own hands. Launching a frantic search for him, what did they find? His car, it was parked inside or outside of a farmhouse. The keys were still in the ignition and he's nowhere to be found. So this is wreaking a foul play a little bit, maybe. The real shocker though is yet to come. Nayuki's whereabouts remained a mystery, leaving everyone in the village scratching their heads. Not until our dear Yumi stumbled upon his body at the school, in the bottom of the infamous pipe in the septic tank. The authorities were clearly perplexed in this case. With no clear evidence of any foul play, they resorted to declaring it an accidental death. They labeled it as hypothermia. This was in the winter. A multitude of unanswered questions continued to haunt everyone and everything around the case. Naiki and his death brought out brought about like anything does like a bunch of theories around the case because there was no answers i want to credit before i get too much further into this my son gave me the idea for this show and we got a lot of the information from dx detective on youtube which led us to some news articles and some reddit posts on the internet so the first theory is the peeping tom theory some speculate that naiki was an ambitious peeping tom who took to his voyeuristic tendencies and I guess you could say he sank to a new low by hiding in the tank. Unfortunately, then his plan would backfire, resulting in his own death. If he had entered into the hole or this tank and essentially, I don't know if he got stuck maybe, and low temperatures eventually killing him. The idea of Nayuki being a peeping Tom might seem like the simplest explanation. There are numerous factors that don't add up. First and foremost, the dimension of the pipe itself make it difficult to believe that Ayuki could have entered it with the intention of spying on someone. Moreover, the timeline events don't support the theory. Naiyuki had been missing for four days before his body was discovered. Another significant point to consider is the missing shoe. So if Naiyuki intentionally goes into this pipe and into the septic tank, why would he have taken a shoe off back at the car? Because it was found a few hundred meters from it, close to a river which means that he's walking with one shoe off, which doesn't make sense if he's trying to conceal his actions. Furthermore, there's no evidence of Nayuki having any prior perverted tendencies. The authorities found nothing on this person or in his home that would suggest he had any such intentions. Additionally, Nayuki was a well-respected member of his community with a stable job and no history with the trouble of the law. His relationship with Yumi also seems to counter the Peeping Tom theory well, some reports suggest that they could have had an affair, there's no evidence to support this, like most things in this case. I think 
to me, like when I do read that, I can't see how she entered the septic tank voluntarily. In this case, one thing I did find researching, this isn't the first case of people dying in toilets, actually in Japan, for kind of perverted reasons or falling in there drunk, actually. So one of the other things that kind of, to me, go together, but it's the political motives and his connection to the Fukushima power plant. So at the time, Japan's turbulent political landscape and mm, <clears throat> Nayuki's kind of relationship to high-ranking government officials could have put him in a position where he was privy to some secret information he wasn't supposed to see and somebody didn't like that and took him out. Let's talk about the Fukushima connection theory. As we know, Nayuki was an employee of a nuclear power maintenance company working at the Fukushima nuclear power plant. He had access to high-ranking officials and was one himself. I think he worked in sales. About a month before his death, his colleague committed suicide. And right at this time, there is a controversial issue going on about the expansion of the Fukushima nuclear power plant into the Dulu village, which again would be an economic benefit, but the villagers themselves are opposed to it. Mayuki's high position in the nuclear power plant could have made him a target or someone that was crucial in the unfolding of these plans so he ended up being targeted and some theories believe that Nayuki was murdered because he knew too much about the expansion another theory suggested is that Nayuki was a member of a secret society and dying like this was an accident as some part of a weird ritual gone wrong and then you have the experimental death theory which suggests that Nayuki was the victim of an odd and weird elaborate science experiment gone wrong. Whether it was the testing of a new assassination method or cutting edge spy technique, they flushed him. The experiment ultimately led to his untimely death. It's just a mystery, that's all it is. Search for closure in this case has been going on for over three decades. Despite numerous theories being put forward, the case remains unsolved. Or 4,000 villagers signed up by petition and requested a new investigation into the matter, but the case has never been opened due to Japan's statute of limitations. However, the search for answers continues, and many people involved with this case have remained haunted by the lack of closure. The question of why Noyuki ended up in the sewer pipe remains unanswered. Was he the victim of foul play, or did he crawl into the pipe willingly? I can't think he went in willingly. There's a lack of concrete evidence. The only thing that we know is this is going to remain a, a mystery for a little bit longer. Thank you again for joining us. 